It's home to the biggest freshwater fish in the world, the beluga sturgeon. This river creates sanctuaries for threatened species. like the majestic white-tailed eagle. Europe's earliest and oldest riverine forests are found here. And every year, millions of birds follow the Danube on their annual odyssey between the Arctic and Africa. No waterway in history can match its economic and cultural importance. This vital corridor has attracted people for thousands of years. On its way, the Danube passes through ten countries and four vibrant capital cities. Belgrade, Budapest, Bratislava and Vienna. That makes it the most international river in the world. And in spite of all the changes men have made, it remains a river full of secrets and stunning landscapes. The Danube has created a maze of floating islands, lakes, and flooded forests, home to 4,000 animal species and a 1,000 kinds of plant. The delta is famous for its pelicans. They breed here in giant colonies, concealed and protected by dense screens of reeds. Every spring, 2,500 breeding pairs leave Africa to fly to the Delta. Here, the Danube flows through Romania and Ukraine to reach the Black Sea. But this powerful river has an awkward birth. Officially, it begins here, in the no-man's land between river and sea. This is the old lighthouse at Sulina, kilometer zero. For in contrast to every other river in the world, the Danube's length is measured from the river mouth. Crossing half of Europe, it stretches for almost 3,000 kilometers. It flows through many different landscapes and changes its personality with each one. Before reaching the watery wilderness of the Delta, it flows through the Romanian plains. At the Iron Gate, it has gouged a steep ravine through the Carpathian Mountains. It crosses the Hungarian lowlands. And just before Budapest, it abruptly changes direction, skirting the northern foothills of the Alps. Its source lies deep inside Germany's romantic black forest. These deep, dark woods conceal a creature from view. But nothing can mask its far-reaching voice. In 
spring, the call of the Capicale echoes through the woods. The dense forest also belongs to the lynx. High in these hills, a tiny brook springs to life, a break. Crystal clear water seeps from the ground at several points. This could be the source of Europe's most powerful river, at least that's what the plaque says. But nobody's quite sure. The Danube seems to spring from several sources. That's why in the castle garden at Donau Eschingen, they built a basin to catch the water as it emerged and called this the source. It's as good as any. But only when the break joins another tiny black forest river, the Brigach, can this combination call itself the Danube. It's the beginning of a mighty river system, Europe's Amazon that will divide and unite half the continent. But before that happens, the Danube has a major problem to overcome. Just 36 kilometers after the river started its life as springs, the waters of the Danube soak through the gravel and disappear back underground. Here, where limestone mountains divide Europe's waters, a war is being waged between the Danube and the Rhine. The Rhine takes the subterranean water to the North Sea and the Danube to the Black Sea. Little by little, the Rhine is winning. They call this underground river the Black Danube. For years, cavers have tried to pin down the precise route of this ghost river. They still haven't succeeded. But they know that more and more of it flows the wrong way, westwards into the Rhine. One day, the entire cave system will collapse. Then the Danube will be forced above ground, its change of direction there for all to see. But until that happens, the Danube's waters will disappear underground for 200 days a year. It looks as though the river has dried out, but it always returns to continue its journey. Downstream, the Danube slices its way through the limestone forests of southern Germany, on its way to a rendezvous with the forces that will really transform it. Even if the Danube does lose its battle with the Rhine, it will never run out of water. The reinforcements come from the Alps. During the winter, huge masses of snow pile up on the Alpine peaks. And when spring comes, Icy torrents pour down the mountainsides. Armed with fine grit, the water polishes the rocks as it plunges down the slopes. 
The weight of water carries away sand and gravel from the mountains and deposits them in the wide alpine valleys. These mountain rivers, on their way to the Danube, are the ideal habitat for otters. With their thick fur and streamlined bodies, they're perfectly adapted to life in the swift, cold waters. And they find food with ease in the seemingly empty river. In the springtime, the giant Danube salmon leave the main river and swim up these tributaries. So does the nace, a member of the carp family. They swarm upriver, driven by an inner imperative. They must breed before the waters warm in the summer heat. A male Danube salmon carefully approaches a female. sweeps of her tail, the female creates a nest in the loose gravel. This is where she will lay her eggs. of urgency in the shoal of Nace. They must spawn soon. Back with the salmon, the excitement is growing. Success. The nace have spawned just in time, each female laying between 20 and 100,000 eggs. Then, exhausted, the fish drift back downstream to the Danube itself. The alpine waters have transformed the Danube into a broad river, and now she passes into a new country and one of the most beautiful river valleys in the world. Austria's Bachau. This is where the Danube is at her most gentle. It's hard to believe such bright, exotic creatures can be at home so close to an icy mountain range. Bee eaters and emerald lizards are usually only seen much further south. The secret of these animals' success is the exceptionally mild climate. The bee-eaters nest in the loose walls of the vineyards and the gentle Wachau weather keeps them cool in summer. Loose is silt carried down from the Alps like the shingle and gravel. In spring, the entire Wachau bursts into flower.
In the fall, the grapes glow, ready for harvesting. The Wachau has an international reputation for its wines. The Danube gives the steep terraced vineyards a special advantage. This is where cool, damp air from the northern forests flowing down the river meets dry, warm air moving up from the Hungarian plains. The mix creates the ideal climate for the grapes and the animals. The Wachau is the gateway to a city inextricably linked with the great river Danube, Vienna. As the river's biggest metropolis slowly stirs to life, nearly two million people get ready for a new day. And yet if you live here, you barely catch sight of the Danube. The waterway that flows through Vienna is man-made, the Danube Canal. Yet just a few kilometers from this hectic bustle, on the far side of the city, there's a completely different world. The Donauauen National Park. Here, the Danube is as wild as its South American counterpart, the Amazon. The National Park is home to some of the most species-rich, dynamic habitats in Europe. This temperate jungle is a maze of sidearms and oxbows. Water rules in these woods. The first rays of the sun wake the young grey herons. They're impatient to leave the nest. The water below is a last refuge for a creature that is almost extinct in the rest of the continent, the European pond turtle. The life of the great reed warbler is largely hidden by the reeds. Here it builds its nest and feeds its young. And what goes in must come out. The little bittern move through the reeds with great skill. They avoid wet feet, even when fishing. Their stripy plumage matches the reeds and makes them invisible to the fish below. Their chicks are hidden deep in the reed bed.
The parents take great care when arriving or leaving the nest, not to betray its position to predators. Wetlands form a wilderness between the river and the forest. It's an amphibious world, always in a state of flux. Everything depends on the main stem of the Danube supplying the side channels with water. These oxbows are the most productive ecosystems in the riverine forest. But this watery paradise is under threat. Over many centuries, the Danube has meandered and spread a layer of gravel throughout the flooded forest. That gravel is critically important to all life here. East of Vienna, it's up to 60 meters thick, Europe's largest freshwater reservoir. But gradually, these backwaters are running dry. The cause? The Danube is digging itself deeper and deeper into its own bed. The water level in the gravel is falling with the drop in the river and cutting off the water supply to the oxbows. Here, east of Vienna, the Danube flows freely. building up its natural sandy banks as it goes. But appearances are deceptive. To reach here, the river had to pass colossal dams. Ships and barges can pass through the locks, but the gravel and sand that the Danube drags with it from the Alps is left behind. And that's why the river is getting deeper. Scientists from Vienna's University of Natural Resources and the river authorities are investigating the status of the river downstream of the dam. How much gravel is the river transporting? They've discovered the river bed is in constant motion. The antenna has detected a signal. The receiver combined with GPS can pin down the precise source. The scientists are looking for real rarities, plastic stones. Each of these tracer pebbles has a unique signal. They're thrown into the water at predetermined points to check how and where the river's gravel is moving. The amazing discovery is that each pebble migrates about three kilometers a year. Doppler sonar can portray every centimeter of the riverbed. 
Combine this with information from the plastic pebbles, and there's enough data to make an exact 3D model of the empty Danube. Shingle and gravel bunch up into dune-like shapes traveling downriver. 800,000 tons a year is transported downstream in this one section of the Danube, and there's no new gravel to follow from upstream. The riverbed is deepening. This information has allowed the river's engineers to develop measures to stop the Danube digging itself ever deeper. They collect gravel downstream and release it upstream. thousand tons of it every year. But this is only half the material needed. The fight against the deepening river bed will never end. All they can do is get more efficient. Experiments are underway to add larger, heavier gravel to try to reduce the erosion. It's a never-ending task, but the creatures of the riverine forest depend on its success. Just 40 kilometers downstream from Vienna is Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia. Here, where the Danube flows through the center of the city, a drama takes place each night. The beavers are back. Under cover of darkness, they build their dams at the river's edge. A hundred years ago, beavers were extinct on the Danube. In 1966, a few individuals were released in Germany and Austria. Now, they've spread up and down the river. Not everyone is happy about their return. A fence is hardly a serious obstacle. It doesn't stop the beavers breaking into people's gardens to feast on the trunks of fruit trees. Twigs are worthy of a chew. And the fruits are not ignored. It's no surprise then that catching beavers has become a mini industry in Bratislava.
This one will be released where there are less people and no fruit trees. Just after Bratislava is a barrier of concrete and steel that has proved highly controversial, the Gabchikovo power station. Vienna's power stations caused the Danube between Vienna and Slovakia to drop two centimeters a year. But building this Leviathan destroyed many kilometers of precious wetlands. Here the waters are measured and divided. Even for sport and leisure purposes. This is no longer a river, it's just water channeled between artificial barriers. And underwater, the wildlife has changed too. The round goby is not a local fish, it's an alien species. But they've made themselves completely at home here. They came all the way from the Black Sea. Freight barges brought them in their ballast water. Gabchikovo's water management project has completely transformed the Danube. It runs in an unnaturally straight line for 60 kilometers towards Hungary. But the Danube has never kept to a single course for long. Millions of years ago, this power station would have been beneath the waves of an ancient sea. And this was where the Danube ended. But then the weight of the water broke through the Carpathian Mountains and the Danube flowed on toward the Black Sea, growing by a thousand kilometers. Now one important tributary remains, the Tisa. It flows into the Danube through the fertile steppe landscape of the Hungarian Pusta. A unique breed, Hungarian steppe cattle, graze here. But in April, the Pusta's boundless meadows belong to strange birds. And they're even stranger mating rituals. Great Bustards. The cocks puff themselves up to impress the females. They're the heaviest flying birds in the world. These wide open plains are important breeding grounds for many species of threatened steppe birds. They need the space to reproduce. Here, where the Tisa and Danube cross the Hungarian plains, millions of migratory birds take a break on their way to Africa.
They've come to replenish their energy for the long flight south. They'll find enough food, grain and insects on the harvested fields. The Tisa moves sedately towards its appointment with the Danube. But below the surface, a rare drama is about to play out. It only takes place every few years. One day in early summer, when the temperature, humidity and air pressure are exactly right, miniature monsters emerge from the silt of the riverbed. Mayfly larvae. They leave the water and fly to the nearest bush on the riverbank. Here they shed their skins and turn into adult insects. The males emerge first. Skimming over the surface, they search frantically for females. Later, the first longer-tailed females appear. And as soon as they arrive, the males pounce, forming knots on the water as they mate in their masses. The pleasure is short-lived. As soon as they've mated, the males die, floating downstream in their thousands. Fertilized females form thick clouds over the water as they beat their way upstream to lay their eggs. Each female lays about 9,000 eggs, and the current will deposit them in the mud of the riverbed, exactly where their parents emerged just two hours before. There the eggs will hatch, and the larvae will wait for years until their time comes. Just after sunset, the spectacle is over. Not a single mayfly will survive till morning. The Danube leaves the spectacle of the mayflies of the Pusta behind, and flows towards the Carpathian Mountains. Over the course of history, it has bludgeoned its way through this mountain range. Here, at the Iron Gate. The Danube is squeezed between Europe's highest ravines. The cliffs rear 300 meters out of the water. The river is just 150 meters wide and 90 meters deep. For the Danube bargemen, the Iron Gate marked the border of Europe. This was the most arduous and dangerous stretch of the river. The twists and turns and underwater rocks created permanent fierce rapids, dangerous flotsam and powerful riptides. There were even points where steamboats had to be helped upstream by trains.
At the entrance to the Iron Gate, the fishermen cast their nets. They mostly caught small fry. But then, as now, they were hoping to hook the most valuable fish in the world. The beluga sturgeon can reach a length of eight meters. The income from one female fish full of kilos of caviar could support a fisherman and his family for years. These huge fish once swam far upstream to their spawning grounds beyond Vienna. Today, this giant's journey ends here. In the 1970s, the Derdap One dam was built, and the wild waters of the Iron Gate were tamed. But it's a barrier the sturgeon can't pass, and if these giants, which live up to a hundred years, aren't able to reach their spawning grounds, then the species may be heading for extinction. But the dam is important, for it provides almost the entire electricity supply to two countries, Romania and Serbia. 17,000 people were rehoused as the raging cataracts were transformed into a 150 kilometer long lake. Broad and sluggish through the Romanian plains until after almost 3,000 kilometers she finally approaches the Black Sea. Here the river splits into three main and countless subsidiary branches in a giant delta. The boundaries between land and sea are unclear. At the coast, all is ambiguous, and the embankments are needed to guide the ships into the navigable channels. But the Danube is constantly creating new shallows and barriers. Where a few years ago there was sea, today there is a chain of sandbanks. Seventy million tons of sediment, the bulk of ten great pyramids, are deposited in the delta every year. This is the final resting place for the gravel and sand washed from the Alps. For the birds, this new territory is a paradise that is immediately occupied. Thousands breed here in gigantic colonies. Others use it as a base for hunting expeditions along the coast. Waders probe the mud for worms and other small creatures.
spoonbills sweep the brackish water, feeling for morsels of food. Thousands of terns breed in crowded colonies. On the newly made land, the sandbanks and low-lying islands, they're safe from predators. With no foxes to worry about, they can lay their eggs on the ground. The little ringed plover breeds here too. The male is doing his best to attract a female to the nest he's built. It's hard to see what he's actually done. And the female isn't particularly impressed. but he won't give up that easily. She isn't sure and hesitates for a moment. He sees his chance and he struts his stuff. season in the Delta lasts until August, when many of the birds will depart for their winter quarters in Africa. Until then, the watery wilderness at the mouth of the Danube offers food and shelter. Danube also has another dramatic and wild side. Overnight, this river can transform into a raging inferno. In episode two, we shall see how all life along this great river is constantly challenged by the unpredictable play of the elements and of the seasons.